welcome back to the Beer Dog Reviews and welcome to this special focus on Spanish beers. So I'm going to be looking at four different beers today. I've got two session IPAs, a pale ale and an American pale ale. The first one that I'll be looking at is called Surya by Cervezas La Pirata and it's an American pale ale which comes in at 5% on this 330ml can. It's not a lot of info on the can wrap. Well, unless you speak Spanish, which unfortunately I don't. But there we have it. So you've got a, a rabbit there, neatly avoiding a trap by the looks of things. Funky can wrap there, I think. Looks pretty good. So, it does say it's got 30 IBU, so I'm hoping for at least a touch of bitterness. 5% for an APA? That's about right, I'd say. For just a standard American pearl, anyway. Let's get it out and see what it's like. Quite clear as I pour it. There we go. Pop the old can down a second. There's a very slight gentle haze to it. It's a very pale beer. In the light, it's just touching on straw coloured. But generally, that's quite a lemony yellow beer. Got about a finger there of. Quite mixed white head and just gentle carbonation. On my nose, I'm getting blood orange and pineapple. Maybe a hint of the flavour to come. Let's find out. That's not bad. The slight hint of pineapple in the taste. You're getting a nice hint of blood orange there. You are getting some nice white bread malt in there. And then on the back end, there is a nice bitterness. It's not overly powerful but it's enough to shift it from the east coast just slightly further west. Yeah. It's not quite a, a west coast as in sort of Washington, Oregon style, you know, that piney bitterness. And it's not quite that California style, you know, your Sierra Nevadas, things like that. It's just a good old fashioned American pear ale. That slight sweetness at the front end is perfect because it cuts through the bitterness and the malt really well. So you don't end up with a, a lingering aftertaste. You're getting all the flavour that you want with none of the backbite if you like. I've not had a lot of Spanish beers. The ones I've had, some have been slightly better than others, shall we say. But that, that's a good beer. Okay. Surya American Pear Ale there. A pretty good beer. Would I go back to it again? I think I would actually. Well, cheers to that one. And do you stick around for the next in my Spanish review. Okay, so the next one we're going to be looking at on this Spanish focus is Fiesta Pale Ale, which is from the 
Oso Bruco coming in at 4%. There we go. Nice little image of a sort of Spanish seaside town there. Got a boat on the water. That sort of typically Spanish style of artwork there. Uh, let's have a look. It's got mosaic, cascade and Columbus hops. And we're actually using verdant yeast, which is interesting. I suppose um, verdant down in Cornwall is not too far from Spain, is it? So they've, they've used verdant's own yeast in this one, which is quite interesting. So let's just get into a glass and see what it's like, shall we? Quite lively on the opening. I can already get the aroma coming out the can there. It's interesting. A nice four percent pale. That should be quite sessionable, shouldn't it? Yeah, that's definitely lively. There we have it. Mildly hazy, very pale straw coloured beer, with about a finger of quite spacious white head there. But slightly hissing carbonation, which is quite good. You can't see any carbonation rising up through the glass, so whether that releases quite early on and then that's it, we'll see on the taste, won't we? Plenty of tropical on the nose, there's pineapple in there. Slight hint of sweet citrus. But it's mainly pineapple you're getting. Oh. I, mean, I tend to think of Cascade more uh, imparting a bitter note, but with the mosaic and the Columbus as well. Could be interesting. Quite tart and tangy at the front end there. The carbonation has almost gone now. I mean, it's not a dead beer, obviously, but it's not opening up any new flavour there. So definitely pineapple coming in there. There's a slight hint of satsuma. But you do get quite a nice bitterness on the back end, which is nice. So, as a pale, that's um, quite well rounded. It's balanced. And you are getting quite a bit more flavour than you might expect. Rather good, enjoyable summer beer. I could certainly sit down and have a couple of those. Definitely sessionable. It's very drinkable, as you can see already. That's, um, well, rather enjoyable. I think I prefer to be Saria. Slightly more, possibly, but as a nice, easy drinker, you can't really go wrong with that one. Not sure where exactly they are based. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so they're based out of Madrid, but this one is actually brewed and canned for them by Four Pure. It's interesting. So, Spanish brew, but made here in the UK, in London. So, not quite a Spanish beer. But it's a nice beer. What more do you need? Well, 
like I say, still a good beer. Nice easy drinking summer beer. You can't really go wrong there, can you? So that's that one. Fiesta Pale Ale by Oso Bruco. Not bad at all. I think we've still got two more to look at. And both of them are actually session IPAs. So we'll have a look at those two once I've finished this one off. So I'll see you very shortly for the next section. Okay, on to the next one. And what we're going to be looking at this time is, forgive any pronunciation errors here, Geros Voladores. It's a session IPA from the Barcelona Beer Company. Now, after the last one, no, it's been imported. It's not brewed in this country. That's okay. Uh, it is a session IPA coming in at 4.5%. So there's info all over the place on here. Uh, doesn't say what hops they've used, I don't think. So it's going to be a case of uh, give it a pour and see what it's like. So, funky looking can wrap there. Uh, got some pigs there with wings and a delightfully vibrant pink colour. But like I say, no real info on the can there. Uh, best before the 11th next year, so hopefully that means it's quite fresh now. Well, there's only one thing we can do, isn't there? Get her out and see what she's like. Mm, looks a bit richer in colour than some of the others I've had. Almost gold, I would say. There we go. And very, very slightly hazy. Uh, no sediment, but gentle carbonation rising up through the glass. I can just about pick that out. So that's um, almost verging on a golden colour. Nice clean white head. That's what I do like to see on an IPA. 4.5 I believe. Yeah, so 4.5 percent. Looks like a session IPA, doesn't it? So, aroma. Hmm, that's interesting. got an almost lager style of aroma there. You know, hint of lemon, bit of pepper maybe. Not really picking a lot else out of that one. But the aroma can be deceiving. We'll give it a go and see what it's like. Hmm, slightly confusing. Well, forgive the uh, sudden change in lighting, the uh, sun's just gone behind a cloud there. Anyway. So it starts off with a hint of lemon and a touch of spicy peppery note. Just as you'd expect from a lager or a pilsner. Bear in mind this is an IPA and then you get a rush of really piney bitterness. Very confusing. Dare I say it, it's, I would 
potentially put it in the category of more of a hoppy lager than a IPA, but it's not bad. Not quite what I was expecting. That piney bitterness is rather refreshing actually. It's just a bit odd, but not a bad beer. On the next taste, not so much of the lemon or the pepperiness, and the bitterness has dialed itself right down. I think that was an initial rush, and then that's it. Becomes a bit thin. I won't say bland, but it's getting close. It's not a bad beer, don't get me wrong, but it's not what I would call a session IPA. It is sessionable. I can see where they're coming from. It just doesn't hit the right notes for me. But then that's just my opinion. Have a look and see if it's got anything on there. No. That's a load of beer company. It's got the ingredients. That's about it really. Well, there we go. Like I say, it's okay. You can drink it. Not bad, just not one I would want to rush out and drink again. I, I'm sure it'll go down lovely at a barbecue or a festival. You know, a couple of cold ones of that sat out in the sun just doesn't quite do what it says on the tin. There you go. That might, might just be me. But for me, it just needs that little bit more. A little fruitiness, maybe. Or if you're going to go down the West Coast route, crank up that pininess, get some grass notes in there. Just get that lemon and pepper away. It's not a lager. Don't try and be a lager. But there we go. Not a bad beer. This is damning with praise, isn't it? But perfectly drinkable. Right, there we go. I've got one more to go. Of these four, which is from Peninsula. And it'll be another Session IPA. But this one's a little bit stronger. Okay. See you all very shortly in video time. And we'll see what that one's like, shall we? Okay, so the final beer on this little Spanish road trip comes from Peninsula and it is Paseo, which is a Session IPA, gluten free, coming in at 5.1%. And very simple, I would say reminiscent of a California style artwork and there it is it's definitely got that Cali vibe about it let's have a look to see what they say if anything now, this is an imported one so it's not been brewed over here for them Don't have a lot of info on there. Got the ingredients and all the legal bits and bobs. Yeah. Don't drive a car if you're pregnant. That's about it, really. Oh, there we go. No. Oh. We're going in blind. As we seem to be on quite a few of these Spanish beers, I've noticed. Let's get it open. 
see what we've got. Alright. Looks very pale on the pool. Quite a lively bear. Yeah, you've got a good solid finger and a half, nearly two fingers of head there. Very pale. I mean, the camera's making it look a lot darker than it is, but I'd say that's not even straw coloured, that's yellow. Very pale at that. Despite the head, looking through the beer, there's not an awful lot of carbonation in there. Well, see what it's like. A little bit of hissing carbonation, but there's no bubble sticking to the side of the glass. There's nothing rising through the middle. Hmm. Interesting. Give it a go and see what we've got, shall we? Ooh, the aroma's not great, I have to say. Just trying to work out exactly what I am picking up through the aroma. There's a slight hint of citrus, not an awful lot. Date on the bottom. Uh, used by 31st of January next year, so it shouldn't be too bad. I can top it off now. But that smell does have me slightly worried. I mean, when I pulled that next bit in, there's a, I don't know if you can pick it up, there's a cloudiness hanging around in the beer. That's not right. That is not right at all. Huh. That's not a haze. That is... That's a cloudy layer. And if I turn the glass, you can see that cloud, it doesn't move with the glass. So... I might regret this one, but in the interest of science, let's give it a go. Hmm. Where is the slight hint of citrus in there? Not quite sure what it is I'm picking out though. That is um well tasteless I have to say. Oh no, no, that is not a beer for me, I'm afraid. No real flavour. The aroma is dank, but not in a, you know, a rich IPA kind of way. It's, it's dank in a, I've walked past a open sewer, a swamp kind of way. That is, it's unpleasant. To drink itself, it's not so unpleasant as a drink. The aroma is very off-putting. But the only reason it's not so unpleasant to drink is because there's no flavour. I mean, there is no flavour at all. I'm not picking up very much in the way of malt. There's a slight bitterness on the back end. It's not piney, it's not 
herbal, it's just... It almost tastes artificial in a way. That is, um, I wouldn't quite say it's diazotoly, but we're getting close there. Maybe a bad batch. Maybe they've put too long a shelf life on it. I don't know. But if that is indicative of what that should be like, then don't drink it. Or, you know, I. It's not the beer that I would drink again, that's for sure. That is, um, well, it's not for me. But, it might just be me. Yeah, hold my hands up and say, look, this is just my opinion. But that is, um, I mean, that cloudiness is not going away. That is, I have to put it down, that is, um, Unpleasant, that's the only word I can say. It's not a beer that I would ever drink again, definitely. That is just wrong on so many levels. But you can't have every, everything, can you? That's, oh, that, it's, it's got to my brain. I can't even think straight anymore, but that's how bad it is. But there we go. Not for one. It is not for one. But there we go. Cheers to you all. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe down there. Hope you enjoyed some of this trip through some Spanish pails and IPAs. And until next time, happy drinking.